Thank you, sir. You're welcome. 6 p.m. We're going to call this meeting of the Mount Pleasant Municipal Planning Commission, Tuesday, June 14th. The order will start with the invocation by Bobby and the Pledge of Allegiance by Jennifer. Right. Dear God, thank you for this day you've given us and, and the sunshine. And dear Lord, as we take on this agenda tonight, let her, let her help guide our thoughts and our mind. Um, dear God, we want to thank the... Um, Thank you for keeping us safe and watching over us. And dear God, please be with the people in our community that are sick and may have lost loved ones. Strengthen them as only you know how. Dear God, we ask you that you continue to watch over our first responders and our our um, uh, police and and fire that you know seek you know to try to take care of us and protect them. Dear Lord, continue to be over and watch over our military and the people foreign land and in, in, uh, in the United States that uh, help keep our freedoms, dear Lord. Lord, we know that all blessings come from you, dear God, and we, we, we want to thank you for that. Last time we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a motion to approve the agenda for tonight. I'll make a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Approved. Agenda is approved. Uh, approval of prior meeting minutes, 1022. I make a motion we approve those minutes. Can you announce for the. announce how many people are here? Oh. And that there is a quorum. We do have three people here tonight for the Planning Commission, and there is a quorum. Do I get a second on approval of the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Motion first. Plan approvals? There are none. Rezoning requests? There are none. All right. We'll turn it over to you for annexation requests. Annexation AR 05102022 AR1. African J. Jose from Harper Valley Homes has submitted an annexation request, zoning request, and a plan of services for property located at 935 South Property Road. The property consisting of 115.6 plus or minus acres being further identified on tax map 127, parcel 20.00, and on file for Murray County Register of Deeds. The property is being proposed for future development. Uh, the applicant came asking for annexation. Uh, per state law, the only way cities can annex anymore is for owner consent. They have to do a written consent that is included in your packet uh, to further develop property that they have out on South Cross Bridges uh, to an R2 density, which is your 15,000 square foot lot size. Uh, the plan of services is in the uh, packet also. So is there any questions? on that end of it. Oh, to clarify, there are other ways to annex, but this is the way that's presented so, to y'all right. today. Yes, yeah. by owner request. Is anybody here to speak on this? Uh, we have the developer and uh, you have a, uh, a list of people who's going to be speaking. So it's whichever, whoever you want to start with. Let the developer speak first. Right. Thank you, Rodney. Good evening. Certainly appreciate the opportunity to be here to talk about our community. We're pretty excited about that. Uh, we're certainly you know, pleased to bring a community like this to the city of Mount Pleasant. Uh, as Rodney mentioned, uh, we are requesting annexation and zoning tonight, and that's, that's the extent of our request tonight. It's approximately 115 acre parcel um, right behind a uh, previously developed uh, piece of property on that's within Murray County called Perry's Place. It's, uh, it sits right behind that. Uh, this project will feature all single family residential homes. One, one home, one lot uh, is what our plan is. Uh, there's ample open space that's created in the overall development layout. Uh, we're planning to use uh, pretty significant buffers around some of the property perimeters. Uh, I've talked to a couple of the homeowners that are adjacent to the property perimeters, and that seemed to be something that was interesting uh, to them as well. 
Um, typical communities of this size will certainly feature an amenity area, and we do plan to do that uh, for the benefit of the residents that are in the community. Uh, this can include gathering pavilions, pickleball courts, um, you know, cornhole areas, things like that, just typical gathering places for folks, and we do have that uh, on our programming. Um, one of the, the fam or the property owners that I spoke to recently was uh, the Parker family, which um, Mr. Parker, Larry Parker, and his cousin Mark, who own the property just, just immediately adjacent to it, just a little bit down the road, uh, had a lot of good questions, you know, and we explained to them what we were planning to do, and they seemed to be affirmative to you know, supporting us on this. Yeah. Any questions for me? I think a question would be if you were going with R2, do you have an idea of how many single family homes? So it'll, it'll vary, of course. I mean, we've not gotten through the complete hydrologic study and all of that. So once we get into the stormwater quality issues and can you know, determine exactly how much of the property we'll set aside to manage that properly, then that'll determine it. But we expect that there will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 140 to 100 and probably 60 homes just depends on you know the exact layout that we're doing uh the density will support much more than that but that's typically not our style mm -hmm. when we go into developments we tend to focus more on open space and um, buffers and things like that, that that we found that most of our homeowners enjoy they typically don't prefer to be packed in so we don't we don't do communities like that Anybody else have any questions? It's R2 that you're requesting? Yes. That seemed to be what fit uh, with the, the current zoning ordinances that, that were here. It's close enough to commercial and uh, other residential areas. It's not the high density area like an R3 or something like that would be. Uh, so we felt like that R2 would give us a good mix of 15,000 minimum square foot lot size. That doesn't mean that all the lots are going to be 15,000 feet, but some will. Some will be much larger than that. Okay. Have you had a chance to see the plan of services? Uh, I've briefly gone through Okay, it, yeah. there were some co extra copies out there. I was just checking. Yeah. And for the commission, what y'all are considering is two things. Whether or not to recommend that the city commission annex this property, um, and also the plan of services, which was provided to y'all in the packet, and Kay just indicated there's some outside. Mm -hmm. But that's basically the city's plan to service this area if you annex it into the city. Um, it, did y'all have questions about that for the developer at all? Okay. But then the zoning is. And then the zoning, so we will treat this kind of like a rezone. So this property obviously doesn't have a zone yet because it's not in the city. So if the city does annex it, we're going to recommend that y'all recommend the zoning to the city commission to zone it at the same time that they annex it. So that's not something that would happen later. It would happen at the same time. Okay. And they are requesting R2 zone um, for this area. So we have several people that would signed up also to speak. Uh, Greg Lewandowski. Yeah. Sure, I'm left with a few questions here with the zoning. Um, with 140 homes, the roads are county roads. There has been no mention of coordination with the county to be able to handle that. There's been no mention of coordination with TDOT to be able to handle the intersection on 43 for that level of traffic. Uh, schools in the area are at capacity. There's no mention of coordination for dealing with this, as well as services in the area. There are only two egress routes that are planned for this, getting in and out of there presents challenges to our first responders. God forbid you have a, a big issue, but it would become logistically non-feasible to actually be able to respond there. Without those plans in place and annexation in here, it seems premature. Well, I can address a couple of those yeah. things. I have been in touch with the uh, uh, road superintendent for the county. And um, he has requested that we annex the 1300 uh, feet of road that leads to the neighborhood because what Columbia is continuing to do is annexing everywhere but never annexing the road which makes it really difficult for the county to have all these roads so we've agreed to do that we're, we were going to do some road boring um, in the weeks to come if this moved to the next step it would definitely have a traffic study 
that's not part of the annexation, but as it moves forward, they would the developers, and they're used to that, would have to have a traffic study. Does it need another left turn lane? I mean, that's up to the experts that are in traffic to, to do that, and they would be working with TDOT on that. So we've, we've thought through that, but that's to other people to do those studies, and that will be brought back when it comes back for a site plan. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, Corey, all we're deciding is if the land use plan is appropriate to to annex this property at R2. All the traffic studies and all that would be yet to come. We've met with the schools over and over again and said, it's coming. And that's, we, we've given them numbers, we've given them the number of permits, the number of houses, and that meeting's only been two, three weeks ago. So we have been working with the schools too. So we've, we've covered those bases, doesn't mean they're covered, but we've at least done our job at, and we are gonna work on the road on that too. What basically what this commission will be deciding is whether or not you can service this area according to the terms of this document. Yeah. Um, and then with the zoning, you would be considering whether or not that zone is appropriate based off of the orange paper, mm -hmm. the factors um, that you consider anytime you're doing a rezone. Uh, George Morales, would you like to make a few comments? Thank you. Uh, my name is George Ross. I live at, uh, or I own 935 South Cross Bridges Road. And I notice on the paper, it has my address on there. I'm not sure why, but it's showing as this development is my address. <clears throat> but if it's okay with you, can I pass up some paperwork? Sure. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, first, I just want to start by saying, you know, sometimes these meetings can turn into, you know, an us against them type of meeting and and that's definitely not what I'm about here. Uh, I did uh, recently build uh, 935 South Cross Bridges Road. Um, you know, when I heard that this was, could possibly be annexed, uh, of course, that, that greatly concerns me because, you know, having a big development back there is definitely going to affect everyone's property value that's on this street. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Uh, every builder that's been on this street has followed the guidelines. They've they didn't ask for city favors. They didn't do anything. They came. They built. They they they're using you know the, the utilities that are there. Uh, and this can be done without annexing. If they want to develop something back there, they can. You know they they don't have to go through the city. Now they do have to go through city if they want to do small lots. Now our lots all average probably about an acre and a half. And R five. I mean I'm sorry R two. I believe will allow five thousand square foot lots and multifamily duplexes. Now, that is a R2 possible. or R3? R2. R2 is 15,000 square foot lots. 15,000? R3 is 5,000. That might be what you're Okay, what's R1? 18,000 square foot lots. Okay. And chime in, Rodney, if I'm saying it wrong. I think that's right. Okay. Okay. So they're asking for 15,000 or could also have duplexes too. To my understanding. I mean, you heard him say that wasn't their intent. Right. I think that's in the zoning, yes. Right. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, right off the bat, it does not conform to this area. You know, we build out here to be in the country, and then all of a sudden we're changing this into small lots. You know, I don't think that's right. I don't think it's right that our property values should be affected because they want to come out here and, and develop smaller lots. They can do larger lots. You know, they just want to make more profit. And I understand that. I do, too. You know, I, I love business. I love growing, you know. But also I'm very conscious of my neighbor and my neighbor's property values. When I go in and do a development, I always increase the property values around me. I never decrease, and there's a right way to do that. Um, but also, I want to bring to your attention um, when I was building my property, I had a lot of water problems. And if you want to look at that uh, aerial there, all those veins right there is water. Now, this is row crop land. That means that they are trenching this land. So this water is jumping over those trenches and forming these veins here. So there's definitely uh, water issues on this property. Now I can I don't know where my water problem is coming from, but my house is right here on this corner lot. All right. 
I also know that the other neighbor who asked me about their water problem is adjacent, completely adjacent to my property. She's had major water problems too. I've had to put in a very expensive pumping system, and that pump has always got water at the bottom of it. There's something going on there. The water table's low there, or something is going on there. If you dig down three to four feet, you're hitting water out there. You know, so I don't know how well these guys, I don't know if they've done any soil testing out there, but there's definitely water issues out there. And that water, if you're not going to be putting in drainage systems, pumped out system, it's going to have to go somewhere. So I don't know where they're going to contain that. But, um, you know, this whole, this whole area right here, even if they did one acre lots, could affect these homes there if there's a water problem. There's a creek on this property, too. When you see those tree lines like that, the reason why those are not being harvested is because there's water issues or low issues right there, moist issues. That's why that vegetation grows, grows in that area. Um, If you look on your next page, uh, it's going to show you the school system for Mount Pleasant. And that has not got affected by this year's enrollment yet. We know that there's a lot of growth going on in Mount Pleasant right now. Mount Pleasant is rocking and rolling. The downtown's looking really good. You guys have done a really nice job. It's, it's, a, it's like a gem around here. But there is, there is a, only so many students that can go to this school. And with all this development going on, you can see there's only 53 students left, seats left, for, that, for just the elementary school alone. And the families that are coming here that are being able to afford these new homes, they're larger families. I'll just give you an example. I've helped five families from California come here. And a lot of them, they're just strong Christian families that they like to um, invest in kids and they adopt foster kids. And the first family I helped had nine adopted kids. The second one had 10. The third one had uh, four biological kids. Then the next family had two biological and two adopted kids. And the next family had two biological and two adopted kids, young children. Just those families alone right there would almost fill up this elementary school. So, you know, that's something that we need to consider. But I think the bottom line for me is, is that, you know, we invested in the community and then to have someone come in and not uh, enhance our properties after all the money we've put into it. Everyone that lives on the street, this, for most people, this is their biggest investment. This is what they put their life savings into. This is what they depend on for the future to sell, to retire, to age out of. You know, so, you know, I don't think this conforms not even close uh, to what is already developed in this area. My, my home and all these other homes over here is it's considered uh, Perry's Place, Section 1. On the tax card, what is for sale, what is, what is being annexed or being, trying to be annexed, is also Perry's Place, Section 1. Well, I don't know how you can separate restrictions. I'm, I'm sure there's a way to do it. But our restrictions were very tough. The owner made us do, you know, we had to do expensive homes, all brick. And if you do anything in the backyard, you got to match the building with brick, facade, you know, even the mailbox has got to match the building, you know. So, you know, the, the owners already put in very high standards. And then for them to want to go and allow a development to come in there that's not going to conform anything like this, I think is definitely the, the, the wrong way to go. There's other areas that can do this. Uh, this this area is already established. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jessica Evans. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm one of the residents on the road. I actually, um, it took a year to get this house built. Um, I'm an English teacher. And I'd been working in Columbia, and I wanted to move to Mount Pleasant into the country. Um, and I fell in love with this area. Um, we did have to follow very strict rules in order to do this. And I expected the back lot to be developed because of that area. But I did not expect it to be 140 um and this is going to really lower property values throughout because we needed to be brick it couldn't be 
less the house itself couldn't be less than 1800 square feet and so then you had like acre plus lots um so this is going to put a real strain and i was also told by my contractor that to build back there would be potential problems with sewage and things like that as well um that it will not hold and even one of the houses on my street had problems uh with sewage thankfully i did not i was not one of them and that's why they wanted annexed into the city where it would have sewer services so and nice. but when if they annex into the city um they will lower our property values and um i did have a question is the land next to the city is it attached to the city no, no. i think there's no. two parcels in between can the city annex yes something that's not attached to it yes it's yes. contiguous okay. because they're annexing the road yeah. they're annexing the road. it doesn't necessarily have to be contiguous right. we're choosing to annex the road okay yeah so one of my other questions was on the exclusions. Why are some lots listed together? This, so we did a kind of title search on this property um, and my assistant went in and put every property, this was all one parcel. And then as they were parceled out, they were in different deeds. And so that's each property that was parceled out according to when those deeds were done. So that's why some of them are together and some of them are not. Okay, well, I believe mine's is actually should be separated um, because one of the lots is mine and it's being paired with another lot. Um, and I would say that I, um, I am against it. Um, I don't think it's going to be good for Mount Pleasant and having my parents actually used to have land right behind them and the developer came in and they were originally told it would be a certain way and they ended up being able to put 80 houses like two store I mean it was really crazy um and I just really think it's a bad idea and I would highly advise rethinking the strain that it will put on Mount Pleasant and part of the charm that is what makes Mount Pleasant so special. Anyway, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, Jake Willibur. Good evening. Um, I'm Jake Willibur. I own some property across the road from the proposed development. Uh, I timed my arrival to get here behind Mr. Morales so he could hit all the good points and I could just kind of come in and, and uh, gloss over what he said. <laughs> so uh, I have lived uh, across the road. We moved there in 1985 and uh, very partial to the area and feel like I can speak knowledgeably about the area. Um, uh, one thing that I would like to point out, your, your agenda doesn't say that they're seeking R2 zoning. Uh, I, I would argue that that's not sufficient public notice, that, that if the public doesn't know what exactly they're seeking, it could have been industrial, it could have been commercial, it could have been anything, but you're not telling the community what they're actually wanting to do out there. But I, I would venture to say that if the community knew 140 to 160 homes, there, there would be more people here than that. But nevertheless, uh, I, I, I want to point that out to you. Um, as a resident or as someone who's lived out there, um, very partial to the area. Uh, it's, as Mr. Rallis said, it's nice because it's it's country. It's it's uh, a few homes on rel relatively big lots. Um, I've driven up and down South Cross Bridge Road more times than I can count. Uh, there's no shoulder. It uh, doesn't drain well in areas. It, it's got its own set of issues. Uh, I know there wasn't a traffic study done, but but I do know that as part of your plan of services, you're, you're saying you're committing as a city that you're going to take over that road and, and that that road is going to be passable and, and, and service the, the community of 140 to 160 new neighbors that I'm going to have out there. Uh, I, I'm here to tell you tonight that you're taking a little bit of a liability there. Uh, I know water, uh, when I looked at your plan of services, it just says, well, the city's going to provide water. 
it doesn't tell me what that's going to do to my water quality. It doesn't tell me what kind of fire flow that you're going to have and, and the ability to put out a fire if there is one in the area. Um, lots of things that I don't really understand from, from looking at just what I've what I received when I walked in tonight. Um, as far as the schools go, I can tell you from some experience, I hadn't missed a school board meeting, uh, well, maybe one, but uh, since about 2004. Uh, there's no Mount Pleasant School on the five-year plan for Murray County Schools. Um, you put 140 to 160 homes out there and, and you need to deal with the reality that you may be educating those kids in portable buildings. I would love for you to reach out to the school system and maybe talk that through with them before you get too deep into this process. That That's my glossing overview of, of what you see in the plan of services. From the 30,000 foot view, I want to tell you, Mr. Jose referred to his community, and, and in a sense it would be his community, because if you bring 140 or 160 homes and drop into the country, it's not our community anymore. It's a whole different animal. And I know you guys don't make a lot of money for being here tonight. I know you do it because you're you're interested in your community and the city of Mount Pleasant. And, and it's for that very reason that I would ask you, look look hard at this. I mean, the city's made mistakes in the past. Don't, don't let this be another one. I know you guys have got developments going in other parts of the city and, and other parts outside the city. Uh, some of those are going to be fairly big developments. Some of those fit, some of those might not. I can tell you this one doesn't fit, and I would ask you to look hard at it tonight. Thank you, Thank you sir. we got one more person signed up. Michael Wise. Can't read the last part of the name. Oh, watch me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know that I have anything different to say than anybody else said. I think it's been presented very well. Um, kind of feel like a hypocrite because I moved here. We built a lot in the country, but at the same point, we've got a beautiful area out there. And uh, like it's been said, you know, there was guidelines when these houses were built. You had to do it this way. If I want to put a garage in my backyard, that's got to be a brick garage. I wouldn't want to put a brick garage if I was just doing it, but if I decide to do one, that's what I got to do because that's what it says. So, uh, you know, if something goes in behind us, and, then, and I knew it was probably inevitable when we bought the lot, moved them facility, it's peaceful out there right now in the morning. You step out at 5 o'clock in the morning, and you hear the birds chirping, I hear the chickens down the road. Uh, you put that many homes back in there, you're not going to hear anything but cars starting. Uh, the one thing I did hear that was a little concerning to me was something about the city annexing the first part of the road, but you got an access point all the way around the corner here. If people are going to come out, these people aren't going to drive all the way through the community. They're going to come out down here. And I can tell you from living about six houses from that corner, as soon as they come around that corner, it's like the Indy 500. The accelerator drops and they're to the highway. And so... Uh, the road's too narrow to support that many people. Uh, there's going to have to be speed control out there if this many people get out there. It's not going to be safe. There's implements and tractors, combines, trucks go down this road because uh, the people farm in, in this area. So, uh, you know, I can't you can't stop somebody from selling their ground and, and doing things, but I think if it's going to be built back there, it needs to conform to everything that's around the outside right now. And it's got to be at least a one acre lot. That's my opinion. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You have a question? I do. Um, about Perry's place and restrictions. And is that like, is, is this, does this have, as it stands today, does this have to live under the Perry place restrictions? So it's not? excluded from the Perry place restrictions as filed. Okay. So, and that's my office verified that. I think that would be on the developer to say yes or no whether that exists. Well, we understand that every house as it was built along cross bridges had to adhere to those restrictions, but it's not this property in question. Yes, speak to that. Mm -hmm. We appear about to come years back up again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be just short. It's okay. We want to hear. <laughs> we appeared on this matter. The planning commission. Uh, turned down this project about 10 years ago. But as part of what they did give Mr. Johnson, they allowed him to build out the road front lot. 
the 11 lots that are now built today, that they're acre lots or so, uh, because they felt like that was part of the community built in. But one of the restrictions that the planning commission put, uh, one of the strings, I guess you'd say on that, was that he imposed those restrictions. Those res restrictions were put, presented to you guys 10 years ago. That have been the county. Not, not well, actually, right. it was within right. your the urban growth boundary. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. 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 Within, yeah. Your, within your yeah. urban growth boundary. Yeah. They weren't asking for annexation, so it was yeah. still you guys. Yeah. But you guys did require that they put those restrictions down to ensure that the housing didn't get too dense. Okay, right. mm -hmm. That's not, but that was on the, the properties that were approved, yeah. approved. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And he was referring to the urban growth boundary. Right. So y'all yeah. used to be a regional right. planning right. commission. We still have an urban growth boundary, but now you are a municipal planning commission. That means that you don't regulate the urban growth boundary unless it's annexed into the city. Ronnie, I got a question. Has a, has a hydraulic study been done for fire flow in that area and what it would affect? That that all will South Cross Bridges? that will all come forth, you know, with construction plans, you know, site plans, you know, once the uh, LOAs and all that stuff are filled out for the letter of availabilities and you know that will be on the development. So we don't know yeah. that there's going to be any impacts right now to the current based no. off. Yeah, so all you're determining now is if the zoning is appropriate because you wouldn't do all those studies until that happens and then that the developer has to determine what what can and can't do. And then on the streets, the question come up about it, where the city's looking to annex in the first part of the street, would would the developer be responsible for the turning lanes and stuff? Because his reference is just in the annexed area. Whatever the traffic, yeah, whatever the, the traffic study shows needs to happen will be the developer's responsibility. I think from the city's perspective, we're trying to make sure that the road as it is right now is standard. Um, and then once that's determined, any improvements to the road would be handled by the developer. Um, that goes through our planning commission that comes back through y'all if you through a site plan or a, through the subdivision regulations but that's something that would be addressed later the plan of services is basically saying we can provide these services the way that we can provide them to any other development within the city so i think it would be helpful if Corey, if you could explain some because you know the the property owner has every uh, um, right to request this rezone but several things have been brought up that i think are completely out of our control okay um the schools i mean the what we have on the books for within the city limits are going to go well beyond that 53. that that's something that is totally it's i don't believe that we have any ability as a city government to say the schools are going to be that's the, the schools have to deal with that um restrictions of the old lots Stormwater and water issues, those are all things that would have to be part of the site plan, right? I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and understanding what we can and can't be. So, what a part we're of. considering is whether or not the city wants to take in this property. So, the developer right now, if they developed it as is, they would have to go through the county planning commission and they would have to follow the county's rules for doing that. Um, you heard Mr. Wolver say last time when they, when Perry's place came through, they went through y'all because you were a regional planning commission. We don't have that anymore. So the only reason it's here now is because they'd like to be part of the city. They'd like to be part of the city so that they can get city services because we are not going to provide city services outside of the city. Um, so they have a right to develop one way or another. We're just, y'all are deciding whether you want it to be under the city's jurisdiction or you want to leave it under the county. Um, the a lot of these issues will be addressed like you said the um how the road gets handled how um drainage Storm gets water, handled water. how um the Schools. development in general all would happen through the planning process and i'll say the wrong words it's not a site plan it is yeah subdivision and construction drawing um and so that's something that would come back to y'all later on this is very similar to what y'all do with a rezone. You know, you're saying, is this appropriate for this area? Yes or no? Um, the same so, findings of fact. Yeah, so there's the two things that you're saying today is do we want to annex it according to this plan of services? Um, and then the second is if we do, is R2 the appropriate zone according to that? Can, can we even paper? consider R2 if it wasn't in the uh, notification? I believe it was in the notice. 
Is that uh, I've asked Pass, to pull, check. I'd have to pull it up back up on my um, computer what I sent. Uh, okay. Yeah. It would. Yeah. I would say the test have for the city commission too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> should have been in the yeah. in the paper. Um, it was in the paper. The I don't know exactly what the notice said. Okay. Exactly. I mean, it's been a couple of weeks since I've read it. Okay. Um, if it was not in the paper, then I would concede that Mr. Wolver could be right. We should redo the notice. But I believe that the notice that went in the paper said R2 zoning. Anybody want to speak that did not sign up today? Will, do you have anything you want to add? Or? Uh, well, I, I think the I think we've had some good comments and good explanations from the applicant. Um, we don't deal with annexations often here, so feel free to ask questions about process. Just for everyone's benefit, this is really the first step in considering annexation. The big questions, like Corey mentioned, are is this lot, does it warrant bringing it into the city, and how should you zone it? Um, Beyond that, if it is annexed, if it is zoned, the developer will be bringing a preliminary plat, uh, construction drawings, and final subdivisions, just like any other residential development. So we can we can address those more technical issues and concerns at that moment. But if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer those. Would you like to speak, ma'am? <laughs> If you come up and state your name where I can get it on the sheet, please. My name is Carol Thomason. I'm a lifelong resident here of Mount Pleasant. I live about two miles from this proposed development. Um, my brother lives on, he, he lives in Perry's Place. He was the first house there. He is at work and could not be here tonight, but I'm just, I'm, I'm, so I'm not speaking for him, but I'm speaking for me. And all I can say is I don't know how this is going to benefit Mount Pleasant at all. No disrespect, because everybody has to make a living, but I don't see how it's going to be benefit anyone except the developers. Um, I don't see how you all in good faith could really consider if you're thinking of benefiting Mount Pleasant and what's best for the citizens. All I can ask is think and if you would want it in your backyard and just answer that question with a good conscience between you and the lord and vote accordingly i think if you would just say would you want it in your backyard and just vote accordingly thank you Ms. thomas anybody else You're Shaw Daniels. Shaw Daniels. And I have property on either on both sides of the proposed development. Part of my concern is is the road, and I've lived there for quite a while, is that that road's narrow enough going down through there, and there's so much traffic. I've seen traffic grow because at one time I was the only house on the left side of the road going all the way on out around uh, Sutton Cross Bridges Road. With the development that I've seen so far, the traffic has increased a lot and and the intersection there to bypass sometimes can get a little tricky i know the the adjustments that they made on the state road made a big difference but there are still concerns there and when we looked at this 10 years ago one of the concerns and one of the reasons that the board at that time restricted the development to just the lots around the road was that the water line is undersized to to service the community as it is but now if you add all these additional homes, does the city have any grants in place or proposals to increase that water line up from a four inch to something more suitable to handle all the development? Because this isn't the only development that's taking place. There's additional homes being built on around the road. And those two those two S curves right there can get pretty tricky at times. And I farm at my place on, on the south side and I farm on the north side of this development and try to get a tractor with a baiter or some other type of equipment down that road can be pretty pretty tricky at times because with the new mailboxes that have been built recently and you don't really have a shoulder like Jake had mentioned earlier. So you, you almost have to pull up and stop, let somebody buy, pull up a little bit more, stop, let somebody buy. So if, if this annexation of the road 
is that going to mean that we're going to, to widen the road from the bypass on out past the second entrance into this development? Because the, the other the other access that I see that's not listed on the drawing is right in the curve coming up out, up into the bigger field to the backside. Uh, so that's a little concerning, like someone else had mentioned, coming around that curve and somebody's just pulling out. Uh, there's a good opportunity for some concern there. So that would be part of my concern is if you do consider this to make sure that when we start looking at the total package, who's building the roads, who's going to be maintaining the roads, what type of shoulders, what type of curves, what type of drainage, what type of sewage system and all that stuff is, is, is I want to, to make sure that everybody takes that into account too. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Thanks. And those are really good points, and that's not going to be at the expense of the city. That'll be at the expense of the developer, because that the city's not able to. Ron, do you got anything else? No. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. I understand that that's at the expense of the developer. What's the governance over that? To actually say this is what is necessary with the traffic study? Is that the city will be annexing the road? And did that come down to the planning commission saying this? Shall be done, or is it a matter of an on your honor? It would no. It would have to be built to certain specs. That there would be a bond in place, and we'd have to expect we would have to inspect that it was built to the specs. Except, and we inspect all of our utilities, just like even here in the city. If you're putting in over there on Brookside water and sewer, the developer is paying to do that before they can put dirt over it. We're inspecting it, and it, if there if that road is going to be something that we're going to maintain, we're going to inspect it and make sure it was built to our standards. That wasn't done maybe 20 years ago, but that's certainly the current requirements. So it would be governed by the city's zoning ordinance and yeah. subdivision regulations, and it would come back before this commission. Yeah. Good questions. Any other comments? I think I'd like to make a recommendation that that we continue this to the to the 16th at 5 p.m. so we could get everybody here where three people aren't making yeah, a decision. We were not aware that we weren't going to have everybody here. And then also that we could look at whether the RTA was actually published. No. So maybe we could we could do that on Thursday at, at 5. At 5? That... Mm -hmm. We continue this meeting. Uh, if we find out that the notice did not say R2, do we want to continue it to July? What's your recommendation? If it, if it didn't say R2 in the paper, I do think it's best to continue it. Um, so that we can put the notice in the okay. paper. All right. Did you pull the notice off the? I've got Ben working on that now. So. Okay. Do we need a motion for that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we motion to continue to. I have a motion Thursday to continue to five. Thursday at five. Unless we need to push it further. Unless we need to push I make that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we had a, that finishes that that all we'll, we'll reconvene on that portion of it on Thursday at five. Uh, number eight, do we have any site plan requests? There are none. Old business? There is none. Do we have any other business? There are none. Uh, board and staff comments? Anybody? Bobby. Uh, well, I do want to thank everybody yeah, for coming. Yeah. Appreciate everybody's comments. We're all learning all this together. So I just appreciate everybody. Do we have any more citizen comments that didn't sign up? Mr. Morales? Yes, thank you. Does that mean we're going to have to do all this again? No. They're rec it's because recorded. they didn't hear the information. It's recorded. It's all recorded. Um, if you want to come back. Come back. You're more than yeah, welcome but to. You guys know what I'm saying. It, yeah. I, you know, I don't think that's right. I also don't think it's right for the city that three of us make this decision when there should be five up here, even though we have a quorum. We knew one was not going to be here, uh, that, and we didn't know the other one wasn't going to be here, so we just, we learned that at quarter to six tonight. Okay. Are you going to vote again on Thursday? We will vote on Thursday if we find out that the R2 was published. If not, we will probably not reconvene until July. Okay. All right, and how will we get notice of that? Well, you're getting notice right now for Thursday. Notices are in the paper, and notices are post City Hall. Notice They'll post a notice on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Also, yeah. Well, just like we do every meeting. Yes. But, if but what I'm saying is, the public needs to know. But today you're getting a notice of the continuation okay. of today's meeting. 
Yes, I'm talking about if you were going to have a meeting in July. Right, right, right. I was just thinking if anyone else who couldn't have been here, you know, how are they going to know that it's going to be voted on Thursday? We can do our best with social media, but everybody that's here had a notice of today's meeting. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Thanks, George. Well, thank you. Anything else, Rodney? I'll get a motion that we adjourn. I made. All in favor? Aye. Carries. <laughs>